Okay, this video is going to finish up uh, Chapter 2, Section 5, uh, Transformation of Functions. And a function involving more than one transformation can be graphed by performing the, uh, performing the transformations in this order. Uh, first, uh, do any horizontal shift. Next, uh, stretch or shrink the graph. Uh, number three, reflect. And then finally, do a vertical shift. So we're going to use the graph given down here. This is our f of x graph. And we're going to use that uh, to graph y equals negative a half f of the quantity x minus 1 plus 3. So we just got to do this step by step. You know, we, uh, we have our starting point is this graph. And we just want to work on it sort of from the inside out. Uh, so in your notes, I believe I have this uh, graph printed, and then there are four blank graphs. We're just going to work our way, again, inside out. If we have just the original f of x, let's start in here with the x, and what's the first thing that we are going to do to it is subtract a 1. So let's, in this graph, find f of quantity x minus 1. And what does that minus 1 do in there when it's in the parentheses with the x? Well, that's going to be a shift one unit to the right. So we're going to go one unit to the right. Every point gets shifted over one unit. This negative 4, 0 is now negative 3, 0. Negative 2, 4 is now negative 1, 4. Uh, the origin point got shifted over to 1, 0. Uh, negative 2, or 2, comma negative 2 is now 3, comma negative 2. And 4, comma 0 is now 5, comma 0. So everything got pushed to the right one unit, and I'll connect my dots with my parabola and then my little triangle down here. Okay, so we're working in here. Uh, what would come next? Uh, work on our way out, you know, we have the one half. Don't worry about the negative yet, we're just looking at the one half. So now one half of f of x minus one, and what's that one half gonna do? It's gonna cut our y values in half cut y in half. So all our y values get chopped. Uh, three comma ne or negative 3 comma 0, that's on a y height of 0, so it's half of 0 is 0. This point up here was negative 1 comma 4, chop the 4 in half. Now it's negative 1 comma 2. Uh, we have another x-intercept at 1 comma 0. Uh, this point here, 3 comma negative 2, that negative 2 y value gets chopped in half. Now it's 3 comma negative 1. And again, our y intercept or x intercept did not change. So here we have a little like more half a circle now with a little uh, half triangle or triangle underneath in the fourth quadrant. Okay, now so I don't have to erase any of these graphs. This one is recreated right here. And now we're going to do the next part of the transformation. And that the next part is, and I'll highlight this in red, uh, the negative now in front of the 1 half f of the quantity x minus 1. And remember, this is going to be a flip over the x-axis. Flip. That's supposed to be the word over. That's just terrible. Flip over x-axis. Because remember, we could write f of x equals whatever this is, or you could think about it as y equals whatever this stuff is. And now we're going to take whatever that is and change its sign. We're going to negate it. So we're going to change the sign of all the y values. Uh, I guess a good place to start this graph would be to just do all the x-intercepts. They're not going to change. When we reflect over the x-axis, our intercepts are still going to be negative 3 and positive 1 and positive 5. Now everything that was above the x-axis goes below. So this point up here, negative 1, 2, is now negative 1, negative 2. That uh, curved part of the graph is now flipped. Uh, this point here was positive 3, negative 1. Now it's positive 3, positive 1. And there's our flipped graph, flipped over the x-axis. Okay, we only got one more thing to do. Instead of copying all this again, at the very end of it, they wanted to tack on a plus 3. That's sort of like a, a y-intercept and y equals mx plus b. That's just a shift up or down. In this case, it is a shift up. We're going to shift everything up 3 units. So we can add 3 to all the y values. So anything that was on the x-axis is now bumped up 3 units. 
So I'm going to just take all my x-intercepts and bump them up three units. This point here was uh, negative 1, comma, negative 2, and that got shifted up three units, 1, 2, 3. Now it's at 1, 1. This point here, uh, 3, comma, 1, also got shifted up three units. We can add 3 to the y-coordinate. Now it's 3, comma, 4. And remember, this is like a half a circle or a parabola, and then it turns into line segments, sort of creating like part of a triangle there. All right, there's our uh, our final problem. Oh, no, there's, uh, I think, one more example and then uh, some practice for you. So let's see what's happening here. Uh, graph using a sequence of transformations. Okay, here uh, they're giving us the basic uh, squared function, the parabola. Uh, 0, 0, again, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is also 4. So there's our uh, parabola. And I guess this will take us uh, three uh, shifts. Let's see what we're working on first. You know, working our way inside out. f of x equals, what can we do to the x? Well, it looks like here in the parentheses, they added 3 to it. That was x squared. We sort of put a little space in there and we put in a plus 3. Remember, a shift to the plus side is a shift to the left. So everything got moved to the left 3 units. So the origin 0, 0 is now here on the x-axis. And then I like to think about it like this way. From the bottom of the parabola, and that's what we just graphed, uh, we're going to go over 1 and up 1 in each direction. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1. Or again, you know, these points all got shifted to the left three units. So you're going to subtract three from the x coordinates. This two minus three will become a negative one. Negative one comma four. Uh, if we subtract three from that uh, x coordinate, it's going to be a negative five comma four. And if I connect some of those dots, I see my parabola has just been picked up and shifted to the left three units. Okay, what do we do next? Uh, uh, next thing outside, let me highlight this in red. Uh, we got a times 2. You know, whatever we found in here, now we're going to times it by 2, and that means we're going to double all of our y-coordinates. We're going to make this graph get a little tighter. You know, if it was still around the y-axis, it would be getting tighter to the y-axis. So again, we're going to double all of our uh, y-values. Let me get this out of here. I wonder if I can do this. I don't want to lose that yet. Move this over. So all y values get doubled. And let's see here. Uh, right on the axis, that's three co negative 3 comma 0. 0 times 2 is still 0. So we're still on the, uh, on the x axis there at negative 3. Uh, this point was negative 2 comma 1. Now it's going to be negative 2 comma 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Uh, what did we have here? This point was negative 1, comma, 4. Again, we're going to double the y value. So now it's going to be negative 1, comma, 8. Uh, we have another point here at negative 4, comma, 2. Uh, we just doubled this uh, y value, moved it up twice the height. Same thing here. We have negative 5, comma, 4. Now it's going to be negative 5, comma, 8. So we still have our basic parabola shape, but it got a little skinnier. It's going up faster. And I guess I can just overlay this right on top of here. Uh, last transformation, everything gets moved down one unit. All y values will get one subtracted. So here we were at negative 3, 0. Now we're at negative 3, comma, negative 1. Get, where'd my pen go? There, there we go. Uh, this point was negative 4, comma, 2. That also gets knocked down 1, negative 4, comma 1. This point was negative 2, comma 2. Now it's going to be negative 2, comma 1. Uh, we had our other points up here at negative 1, 8. That's going to be knocked down to negative 1, comma 7. And we had negative 5, comma 8. Now that's negative 5, comma 7. So we took that parabola and just moved it down one unit. Ooh, and that wasn't very good. But I can sort of cheat here a little bit, go like that. Little, eh, close enough. You get the idea. All right, I think this is the last example, uh, or uh, the last thing for you. Uh, checkpoint 8 is a lot like the first example. Uh, they give us this graph here. 
and they want you to do a series of transformations and wind up with negative one-third f of x plus one minus two. So again, on these, oh, pause the video, try the problem, and then start it back up and see if you got it. You know the drill. Uh, let's see here. Uh, first thing, f of x plus one. Remember, I always say it's kind of counterintuitive. Plus, you think you're going to move to the right on the number line, but it's kind of backwards. So we're going to take our graph and shift it to the left one unit. And let me move this down a little bit here. And I'll do this left one unit. So all y or all x values get one subtracted from them. This negative 2 now becomes a negative 3. stop this here for a minute. I realized I updated my uh, slideshow at uh, school, but I did not do it here. I, I chose some better sized graphs for this, and actually, I guess I can just bounce back and forth between a couple. I'll get these out of the way. Maybe I'll just copy. So, Where's that copy, paste, there we go. So let's see, uh, everything gets shifted to the left one unit. So negative two comma zero is now negative three zero. Uh, zero comma three, we're gonna subtract one from the x. So now that's gonna be negative one comma three. Uh, we'll have one at one zero, three negative three, and five comma zero. And these are all straight line segments. Oop. Five comma zero. So we're going to look like this. And maybe what I can do, I'll put this graph over here. And I guess I can just bounce back and forth between them. There we go. So we did the plus one, f of x plus one. Uh, now we got a one-third out front. That one-third is going to cut the y values by a third. Cut y by one-third. Or, you know, uh, divide by three. You could look at it that way. Divide y values by three. So here our y value was zero, so it stays as a zero. Uh, this y value was a three. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that point got knocked down to negative 1, comma 1. Uh, this y value is right on the x-axis. It's not going to change, as will the one at 5, 0. But this one here at negative 3... Ooh, my... Yeah, yeah, we divide by 3. So uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that's going to be over 3, down 1. So we just got a little closer to the x-axis. We took the height of the peaks out and the depth of the valleys out and sort of moved it closer to the x-axis. Now let's see what's the, uh, I guess I can erase this graph over here. Our next thing in front of that is the negative in front of the whole thing. So that is a flip over x. And that means we take all the y values and change sign from positive to negative or vice versa. And the good thing about this, our x-intercepts are still the same. Negative 3, positive 1, 5. And now we're going to take this point that was at negative 1, 1 and make it negative 1, negative 1. So that part got flipped under the axis where it used to be above it. And we had a point at 3, comma, negative 1. Now it's going to be 3, comma, positive 1. The part that was in the fourth quadrant is now in the first quadrant. All right, one more transformation, and we're done. Minus 2. That is a shift down of two units. U-N-I-T-S. We're going to take every point and knock them down 2. So this point at negative 3 is going to go down to 2. Uh, here, the point on the y or x-axis at 1 also gets knocked down 2. The one at 5 on the x-axis gets knocked down 2. Uh, this point here, negative 1, negative 1, also gets knocked down 2. Now it's down here at negative 3. And this point that was at 3, comma 1 gets knocked down 2. Now it's just under the x-axis, 3, comma, negative 1. And we connect the dots. And it looks like so. 
Alrighty, hope you had as much fun as I did. I'll see you in the next section.